guys, this video is about the new JK Inverter BMS and the communication. Communication to computer, communication to your inverter. Because there is a lot of confusion out there, a lot of comments I'm reading, a lot of emails I'm getting, where people are saying, it's not working, I don't know which adapter to use, how do I connect the JK Inverter BMS to my computer? I know, this is not the video you were expecting. I told you in the last video we want to do something completely different. Not JK, not Pace, not Zeploss. It'll come right after this one. I just want to make this quick video here and show you how to connect the JK Inverter BMS with the RS485 cable to your computer to do firmware updates, to do the force update, to change settings. And I want to also show you how to connect the JK Inverter BMS with a CAN cable to the Victron system or to your inverter. Huh? Did you see that? Yeah, it's a late night show again. Guys, welcome back to the off -grid garage in sunny, hot Australia. We are back, normal temperatures. No hot, sweaty, muggy, humid weather anymore. It is back to a dry heat as we like it. Well, we had 35 degrees today and no sweating, nothing. It was just dry heat. So perfect to make even videos during the day here in the off -grid garage. So this video here about the communication with the JK Inverter BMS will fit in line with all the other JK Inverter BMS's videos I have made in the, in the last one and a half weeks, two weeks or so. So I promise this will be the last one with the JK Inverter BMS for a while. Of course we will use this BMS in the future, but I think I've shown all the details then. We went through all the settings, but here, with the cables, with the connections, with the RS485 to USB adapters, there are a lot of issues I can read under the videos. And people just don't know what to buy. So I bought all these adapters here quite a while back when we connected the old style JK BMS uh, to the Victron system. And we also connected the JBD and the DALI BMS to the Victron system. And this was all done with these RS485 adapters. I'll link this video down below. It's a free to use software from our friend Louis van der Waal. It's the, what is it called? Serial DS Serial, as it says it here. And it can connect your JK, your JBD and your DALI BMS to the Victron system. But it only works with the Victron system though. So hence I showed you the Peter boards because they work with all kinds of inverters. Okay, tonight, quick video. I want to show you which RS485 to USB adapter. No, it's actually a USB to RS485 adapters. Which adapter is working with the JK BMS, how to connect them and which chip they have inside. Yeah, we want to open all of them and have a look which of these adapters actually work, which don't. And we also need a normal LAN computer cable. So I have prepared already one by cutting off one end of the LAN cable and strip all the single cables so we can connect them to these USB to RS485 adapters. Some of them come only with a screw terminal. Some of them come with an RJ45 connector on the other side. If you use one of these adapters, you don't need to cut your cable. So these ones are preferred, of course, but tonight I want to test all of them. And also again, very quickly, because there's also a lot of confusion out there, which I don't know why. This is the uh, communication board, which comes with the JK in inverter BMS. And we've got five RJ45 connectors and they are in pairs. There's one pair here, one pair here and the middle RJ45. We never, we never use this one here. This is RS232 and apparently not working or not implemented or something. Maybe it comes with a future firmware update or something. We never use this one. So we concentrate on the left ones and on the right ones. The right ones are for paralleling these BMSs here. If you have multiple batteries, you daisy chain them together using these ports. This is RS485 internal communication. And this is exactly where we have to tap in as well with our self-made LAN cable and these USB to RS485 adapters. We are using one of these two ports to communicate with the BMS and your computer. The ones on the left are for the communication to your inverter or to the Victron system. There's one RS485 port over here and this is the CAN port. So let's concentrate on these two first and see if these adapters actually work. So here in our Jackie battery, which has the JK inverter BMS built in now, I have already connected our computer cable. This is a normal LAN cable to one of the RS485 ports here on the right hand side. 
And the other end of this cable just plugs into a joiner. Well, this is just a setup for me because I'm lazy. I don't want to cut off one of my long LAN cables. So I'm using a very short one here. And this is obviously too short to reach all the way to the battery over there. So that's why I use this LAN cable as an extension cable and this joiner to connect to our short LAN cable where we now connect these adapters to. So when you make your own cable at home, you obviously have the right length of LAN cable available and just cut off one end and you don't need any of these joiners here to extend the cable. This is just for me here for testing purposes. So, and now we obviously have to know which of these um, eight cables here we have to connect to A and B and ground of your USB to RS485 adapter. And um, let me show you this. So, we will use this diagram here to connect our USB to RS485 adapter to our LAN cable. So, here on the left of the diagram, we've got the RJ45 connector, which goes into your BMS, one of the ports on the right-hand side. And the other end of your cable goes into your RS485 to USB adapter. USB to RS485 adapter. Does it make a difference? Obviously not. And even all these, all these adapters which have terminals here, they all come with a ground wire as well. I would always recommend trying without ground because RS485 is supposed to work without. And only if you have any trouble to connect later on or have bad connections or disconnections or something like this, you can try connect the ground wire as well and see if this improves the situation. But here we will go without ground, just A and B, we need two cables. So, and from this diagram, you can see the A terminal can be cable number two or seven. And you can see it's a bit blurry. I apologize for the quality of this diagram here. Two or seven, two is orange, seven is white brown. Our B terminal is one or eight. One is white orange and eight is brown. So to make it really easy, we only use cable one and two, which is our white orange and orange here on the other side. So orange is A, white orange is B. Okay, which one should we try first? This one here, maybe. It's the WaveShare USB to RS485. This is the most expensive one of all these ones, actually, because this is also isolated. So there's no electrical connection between a USB and your RS485 on the other side. So let's try this one first and see if it works. I think we can just take off this terminal block here. Yep. And here we can see ground A and B. And here on the left, we've got the orange and the white orange cable. Orange is A, white orange is B. Okay, just make sure cables are in. And we check again, A is orange, B is white orange. Okay, so the only other thing we need to do is plug this one into our computer and under Windows it will just automatically install all the drivers. And if you're running Windows 7, 8, 10 or 11, it doesn't really matter. You can always do a right click on the start button. Go to your device manager, click on this arrow in front of ports. So most likely you always have a COM1 in your computer, but then it also shows you the USB to RS485 adapter, which has a random COM port. In my case, it's COM3. But yeah, if I unplug, if I unplug the adapter, this COM3 port will disappear. If I plug it back in, takes a second, and there it appears again. So COM3, we keep this in mind. I actually should plug in this RJ45 cable into my joiner. It connects to the JK inverter BMS far, far over there. And let's open the JK BMS monitor. And see, it sits on COM11 now. But if we change this to COM number three and click on connect. Let's see. That looks good. It works. We are connected. 10% state of charge it shows. You can see the numbers going up and down. Everything is working. About shows us the model number, the serial number, which software version I have on this BMS, control settings, everything is there. So this adapter obviously works just fine. Okay, now the big question is what kind of chip are they using inside? I think this is an RF 
TDI or something RF. Let's have a look inside. It is an FTDI. But I can't read this number. Hang on. So I just took a photo of the chip and we can see it's an FTDI FT232RL chip. And I think this is exactly the same what is in the Seplos um, RS485 adapter, which I'm using all the time because it's so convenient. It has an RJ45 port and I can just plug in a normal LAN cable to connect to all the BMSs. This one has always worked with all the BMSs. Seplos version 1, 2, 3, all the PACE BMSs, the Tabaluga, Tantanga, Tiang, whatever it's called. And it also works with the JK inverter BMS. RS485 to USB adapter from Seplos. But this one costs like $40 or something. So here's the Seplos RS485 adapter and this is the same FTDI chip. I'll take a photo and show you here on the screen. So I've shown you now in all details how to connect the uh, JK inverter BMS via RS485 to, to um, one of these USB to RS485 adapters. Let me connect the other ones the same way and we plug them in and test them, see if the software works and take a photo of the chip. So next one is the road number USB RS485 LX08H. I connected our orange and white cable already and let's plug this in. blue light comes on and let's quickly check this one here in the device manager as well because this adapter shows up as COM10. So when we open the JK BMS monitor software we need to change our COM port to COM10, connect it works seems to work we're getting all the details time is running we've got a live view on the BMS so let's open it up and see what chip is inside. This one is actually a bit tricky because it has two tiny Phillips bit screws here. I need to remove first. No big deal. Looks like there are two more screws here on the front under the label. Well then the label needs to go. Warranty voided. Jeez, it gets tinier and tinier. Let me take a photo. So with this one, I'm not 100% sure which of the two chips it actually is. I've got them both on the photo. This is a YD30, uh, I don't know what it says here. Can someone confirm if this is the actual chip? Uh, this one is the other one, uh, 304E932. So I'm not 100% sure which one it is. But this is what's inside this um, adapter and it works with the JK inverter BMS. So next one is this blue adapter here. It only says converter USB to RS485 and it has two arrows. It comes with five terminals here, A, B, ground, ground and plus five volts. So let's plug this one in. So and this blue adapter comes up as COM10 as well. So let's go back into our software, COM10, connect. Oh yeah, here it is. It is there. Live view, numbers are moving, voltages, temperatures, everything is here. About log files, control, settings, everything works. And I like this one here. This one has um, a blue LED which flashes. I like this. This is my favorite so far. <laughs> I think it's also the cheapest. But um, what chip does it have? Hmm? Oh, this might be clued. Just little plastic pins. Okay, and this one has a... Um, it is the CH340G. That's a very common chip. So, works as well with the JK Inverter BMS. Great! So, and the next one on the workbench is um, this adapter. It's a USB to RS485. It's a piece fair. Piece fair, is it called? Nothing else we can see. But it comes with these massive adult terminals. So you really need a big screwdriver here to um, 
Yeah, the terminals are actually not that big, but the screws on top are. And it also has these um, around 20... 250, 250 millimeter USB cable attached already. I quite like this one because these ones are so long and heavy. They always put a lot of force on the USB connector. Oh, well, let's see if it works. And this one comes up as COM10 as well. Ah, this, ah, oh, here it comes. Just takes a while. Live view, time is running. You can see the voltages are changing. Temperatures are changing. Perfect. Okay, let's see if we can open this one up as well. Uh, oh shit, yeah, this is small. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure which one. Take a photo. All right, so there you have it. These are all the tested, and of course we've got the Zeppelos, um so here you have all five USB to RS485 adapters again in the order we have tested them. I usually use the Zeppelos one here because it's convenient. There's just a normal LAN cable necessary to connect to my BMS and I don't have to deal with these um, plank wires here. But as you have seen, all these adapters have worked and they all have different chipsets as well. And yes, of course, all these adapters are linked under the video and on my website as well. As I said before, we had these adapters here on the show before when we tested the serial battery driver, but this was just to test them with the JK inverter BMS now. So if you want to grab one of these beautiful adapters here, knock yourself out. The links are under the video. So, and before we conclude the um, video saga about the uh, JK inverter BMS here, I quickly want to show you how to connect the CAN port as well to your inverter or to the Victron system. It takes only a minute, I promise. So and here we can see the pin out of the CAN communication from the JK inverter BMS or in fact from any other BMS as well. Zeplos, Pace, JK, Tangaluma, doesn't matter. They all work the same way. They all have the CAN low on pin 5 and the CAN high on pin 4. But on the other side, it can be totally different. Victron, for example, uses pin 8 for low and pin 7 for high. That's why they make these overpriced cables. Now you can buy this type A cable from Victron for like $30 or so. Or again, you can make your own. But this here is specific to Victron, pin 8, pin 7. Whatever inverter you have, these could be totally different. It could be exactly the same, pin 5 and pin 4, as on the BMS side. Please check the manual and technical specifications of your inverter. If your inverter has CAN port communication, it should be mentioned somewhere which is CAN low and CAN high, and you can make your own cable in a few minutes. So on the BMS side, it seems to be standard to use pin 4 and 5, but on the inverter side, it could be anything. All right, my friends, there we have it. We've tested all these five beautiful RS485 adapters here successfully with the JK Inverter BMS, and I'm sure they will all work with the other BMSs as well. And you also know how to connect your CAN cable to your JK or Zeppelos BMS, doesn't matter. But then follow the manual for your specific inverter to connect it at the inverter site. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support. Some very generous people bought me a beer yesterday. Well, quite a few beers actually. So thank you so much for your financial support here as well. Keeps me alive, keeps the show going. <laughs> Until the next video, guys, when we do some more do-it-yourself stuff again, and I'll show you actually what we have there. Until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. So there.